Hi everyone, Gabe here from GBR Music. Thank you for checking out this video and welcome to a five minute tutorial on how to create realistic harp glissandies using BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover and one of Cubase stock arpeggiator. Today, I'd like to show you how to transform these boring harp plucks into these beautiful harp glissandies. Today I'm creating this tutorial in Cubase, but you can easily replicate everything I'm going to be doing in any DAW. Logic Pro 10 has stock arpeggiator, Reaper has stock arpeggiator, so you can really do this with any DAW you might be working with. Okay, I'm not going to keep talking for too long, but if you'd like to support this guy and this channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll be notified each time I upload new content. I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer, let's dive right into it. So for this tutorial, I have a very simple example. It's pretty much just a flute melody and some harp chord, some harp plucks uh, under it. So I'm just going to play it and then I'm going to show you how to transform the plucks into beautiful glissandies. So let's just hear it real quick. Okay, so it sounds pretty good already, but this harp part could be much more interesting. And to make it more interesting, I want to transform it into glissandies. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so let me open an instance of BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover. Here we are, and I'm going to go get the harp, which is over here. It's a great instrument, but of course, since it's a light version of the library, they didn't include the glissandies in you know, like the sample they included in library. So you have to kind of like create your own. You could also try to record them. Sometimes I do it yourself, but uh, let me give you an example of that, what that might sound like. Well, I guess I made my point. This was a disaster already. This is very hard. Also, I can only do it on top of two octaves, but I actually want them on, on four octaves, so that makes it even harder. Yeah, so in case you're an excellent pianist, you can probably do it, but I'm not an excellent pianist, so I have to find other ways to do it, and this is my solution. Okay, so the chords of the piece are very simple, and to demonstrate that, I'm just going to go over the first half with you very quickly. So it starts on an F minor, then goes to G flat minor, back to F minor, then down to E minor, then again F minor, then E half diminished, so that's a minor chord with a flat fifth, then to D flat major, C major, and F minor. So in order to create glissandies, we're just actually going to use those three note chords and we're going to stack them on top of each other on four octaves. So I already prepared the part, but let me erase the first chord and I'm going to redo it with you. Okay, so this is the bass chord, F minor. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it one octave higher and I'm going to do this over four octaves. Up, and one more time. And so pretty much that's going to be the case for every chord after that. So if you remember, the second chord was G flat minor. So we just have the G flat minor triad, but spread over four octaves. Okay. So that's the first part, and I did this for every chord of the progression. The second part is to make sure, and that's very important for it to work nicely, that your note length are quantized. So let me mess them up a little bit. Let's say I recorded that chord by hand, and you know, like I, when I put my hands up, every note length was a little different. So if I want to make all of them even, I'm going to select all of them in Cubase, 
I'm going to choose the length I desire for that particular note. So in that case, I want them to be whole notes. So in the quantize window, I'm going to choose one one for whole notes. And then I'm going to go into the MIDI menu, functions, and fixed length. And you see Cubase automatically fixed the length of every note. So it would do it for all of them. If I selected all of them and they were all div a little different, it would do it automatically for every note. And that's very important you do that because arpeggiators are very sensitive devices. And if one note is off, it could actually mess up the whole, like the way the arpeggiator plays the chord. So you wanna make sure that they're really nice and even. Now that we did this, I'm gonna click on the track and I'm gonna get the track inspector. And I'm gonna to go to MIDI inserts and I'm gonna select Arpage SX. So now the fun begins. I'm gonna use the arpeggiator in classic mode. I want the direction to be up and down. So that means the, the glissando is gonna start from the lowest note, go all the way up, and then go back down to the lowest note. I'm gonna choose the step size. So that's the, the way the arpeggiator is gonna divide the bar. So I want it to be divided into dotted 30 seconds. So each note is gonna be a dotted 30 seconds. Then you want to set up the length at dotted 30 seconds also. You don't want the length to be longer than the step size. And then you're pretty much done. So let's listen to the, the part again without the arpeggiator. I'm going to solo it. Okay, and now let me put the arpeggiator on. And it's perfect. That's all you gotta do. One other thing could be nice. I'm gonna go into the audio uh, menu here in the track inspector and I'm gonna go to audio inserts and I'm gonna add a little reverb to the harp to make it sound a little more like organic. Up, I'm gonna choose this one. It's about right here, should be good. And let's just hear it again. without and just like that you have a much nicer hard part so I'm going to place the melody on top again and let's just listen to it all together Okay, this is all I have for you all today, but uh, in case you enjoyed the tutorial, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified every time I upload new content. Thanks again, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.